Hi and welcome. In this video, we will overview the new Audio to Phase as Service feature introducing the 2022.2 release. We will go over how to use the headless version of the app, as well as how to use the new REST API to communicate with Audio to Phase via service request. These two new features make it possible to set up your own service via request, for example, by running Audio to Phase in a server and use it to process files automatically from different users. The headless version is simply an instance of the app without any graphical user interface, which can be perfect for running on a server. In the UI version, we can interact with Audio to Phase by manipulating directly the user interface. However, without the UI, that is not possible. The REST API serves as the mean to interact with the headless application. The current functionality covers basically all the interactions that a user can do directly on the audio to phase interface, at the exception of the character setup, transfer, and blend chip conversion. With future releases, we will continue to expand and improve the REST API. We provide a batch file or shell script in Linux to launch audio to phase in a headless mode. The script can be found on the installation folder of Audio to Phase. You can find this path on the settings menu of the Audio to Phase launcher. Simply run the Audio to Phase headless batch file to start Audio to Phase on headless mode. Once the app is ready, we can start interacting with the REST API. If you need to stop the process or close the application, you can use Ctrl C in Windows or use any kind of kill command. The REST API allows a user to communicate with the audio to phase, whether locally or over the network. In a typical session, a user would send a request through the REST API, which will trigger a response from the audio to phase app, and the REST API delivers back to the user. With the REST API, one can send a request to load a USD file, send several requests to set or modify the necessary audio to face configuration, for example, setting a new audio track or generate emotion keys, and finally send a request to export the animation back. To generate a request with the REST API, various endpoints can be used to access the audio to face resources. Endpoints indicate ways to access these resources, which are basically the different data or functions that can be interacted by the API. Under the same resource, an API will have several routes grouped together. We also need to indicate a method to narrow down the permissible interactions with the resource, such as get to retrieve data or post to deliver some data. Chaining the method with the base URL where the resource is located and the route forms an endpoint. In a post request, a JSON object is submitted in the request body in order to pass along some of the information to the server. In this specific case, in order to get which one is the current track, we need to specify which player we want to read the current track from. If the request is processed correctly, we will receive a response with a status, a result with the data, and a message with various information regarding the status. Please note that not all the routes might generate a result. The best way to get familiarized with the different routes in the API is through the API references. The API documents serve as a double purpose. First, as a reference manual containing the necessary information of an API in terms of resources, routes, and request body parameters, but also as a playground for testing the available routes. This documentation can be accessed locally by navigating to the localhost colon 8011 slash docs. Please make sure that you have Audit to Phase up and running in order to access it. The routes are organized according to their functionality and mostly correspond to the different panels in Audit to Phase tool and data conversion tabs. The default routes serves to check the health of the connection. The general routes are mainly for loading a US stage, listing the available instance in the scene, changing the frame of the timeline, and modifying any of the settings available in Audit to Phase. But please note that in general, we recommend using the specialized get and set settings available in each of the different categories. The player routes deal with all the functions on the Audit player, such as setting a new track or modifying its working range. 
with audio to emotion routes, we can manipulate the emotion keyframer as well as triggering the automatic generation of emotion keyframes. Similarly, we can also interact with a post-processing keyframer as well as the pre-processing settings. Last but not least, the exporter routes allow to export the generate animation to several export formats. Please note that in this release, there has been some changes regarding the data conversion tab. Most notably, we have streamlined the UI and added the ability to batch process the audio files when generating geometric caches. Let's see a particular example of a documented route. In this case, they get emotion names. The documentation provides a brief summary of the purpose of the route and some additional details, such as the type of data that is returned with the route. We can also try the route directly from the web browser. The get function simply retrieves some data without having to provide any additional information. So simply run the execute button to launch the request. If successful, we can see the exact curl command used to launch the request as well as the receive response. In this case, we got back the list of the names of the available emotions in order to face. Post requests allow to send some data to the server. The necessary parameters are given in the request body. One can see the available parameters on the example values or by checking the more detailed associated schema. Note that some parameters are required while others might be optional. In most cases, an optional parameter means that if it's not specified in the request, either the default value or the existing value on the scene will be used instead. So again, please check the more detailed explanations on the request schemas for more specific information on each route. Of course, we can also try out the route from the documentation. The used uh, curl command is also provided together with the response from the server. In this case, we got the emotion weights in a dictionary as it's mentioned in the description of the route. Let's see now the REST API in action. We can use the UI mode to see a little bit more easily what's going on when interacting with the REST API. I have here a USD file with some characters already set up and a folder with two short audio file so that we can test the exporter. Let's get started by loading the USD file onto the stage and we need to provide the path of the file and then we can just simply execute to load the file. As you can see we have two marks with blend shapes set up, each one controlled by its own player. So let's change the track root path to the new folder that we have so we can go to the player routes and set the root path. We need to provide the path to the audio player. So in this case is the world audio to face player as well as the new directory path that we want to set up. You can see that the path has changed and we have a new audio file available. We can then set the new track. We still need to provide a player. And we can just use the default range by just using the default values. And finally, we can try to generate some emotions. And we can just simply use the default values by just simply providing the audio to face instance. We can see that the emotions has been set in the core full face in the emotion keyframer. And then we can finally export our generated animation uh, by using the export geometry cache 
we have to provide which mesh we want to export. So we want to use actually the full face mark. And I want to export it in my demo folder. Export. And then we're going to set a tutorial prefix. We want to use the USD and then change to the batch so that it exports both files and then set, for example, like 20 frames per second. You can see that now our player is running the first file, then the second file. And then we can verify that our file has been loaded. And we have this export folder here with the files that we just exported. We can verify that they are correct by importing them into the stage. And since this is a cache, we can play to verify that the animation is exported correctly. The documentation is mostly for learning and as a reference. For more practical applications, we can set up our own shell or batch script using the curl commands or using other languages such as Python. So here's a very simple example using Python. After importing and defining some basic data, we can first check whether the, we can connect to the server. Then we can launch a request for loading a USD stage, set a new root folder containing our audio files, query the available tracks, and set the active track to the last available file generate some emotion keys automatically, and finally export the animation to a USD file. Here also some examples on how to query the available players and audio to face instances. We hope that you will find these features uh, useful and please check our forum and Discord channels for any doubts or any feedback. Thanks.